So it is going to be very painful here to move on from certain players, but it's it's got to be done. I think we've put the thought into it that we need to put into it. Now it's time to uh, make our move here in terms of moving on from some of these guys that are going to be good, but also holding on to players that kind of fit the theme of the team. Um, worth noting, by the way, again, we still have all of our picks, which is really, really nice. And I am presuming we're about to get more of them. Uh, the goaltending situation is fine with Dustin Wolf, Spencer Knight, and then three really good prospects in the system. We move to the defense. Two players have to go. And those two players are not Mackenzie Weger and Rasmus Anderson. They are not Zane Parekh and Adam Kessler. They're not Yer Yanni Yermo and Henry Muse. Trethway and Brustowitz are going to be the ones that are on the outs. Uh, Trethway, great potential, uh, but he won't switch to be a defensive defenseman, which would clearly fit him well because he cannot shoot the goddamn puck. Um, and Brustowitz, I would have chosen him had he been willing to sign with us, but he was a pain in the ass to get under contract for this year, and I don't want to potentially deal with him being difficult to sign. Trethway's 20, though. Well, Zane Parekh is 21 as a medium elite. Kessler's 20 as a low elite. You can't really go wrong with anybody that you choose to get rid of. But for now, Trethway is one that has to go. Uh, Boychuk in a third? Zach Hyman. He doesn't fit the team, but that'd be pretty good. Joseph a third, two thirds. Two seconds from Nashville or Nick Paul. Um... How good is Boychuk? This obviously isn't going to be uh, Riley Boychuk, but I don't even know who the hell this is. Oh, it is Riley Boychuk, actually. Uh, 77 overall at 19 years old. High top six potential. He's a playmaker, which uh, we're about to get rid of some playmakers. And to be honest, that 90 shot power, he might be able to be turned into a sniper. He was the 12th overall pick for the Jackets last year. Um, Yeah. Trethway is obviously further along. He is a higher priority prospect than Boychuk is. But Boychuk fits what we're doing here a little bit better. And the third round pick is pretty nice. We're going to take that. That is a done deal. So welcome in Mr. Riley Boychuk. And Trethway is out. And ooh, cap whale situation might be needed. We'll see how far down the cap goes shortly. And the other defenseman, as we mentioned, it's going to be Brewster. I'm sticking with uh, with Gessler. Again, the Red Wings could not come to terms with this guy. Like, look at his attributes. I get that he can't skate, but I'm sorry. If we get handed a 20-year-old enforcer who is an 84 overall, dude, I cannot throw this player away. I can't. We have done too many draft of glory goon squads. For me to just be like, nah, let's get rid of that guy. So Hunter Brustowitz uh, could get us Zach Hyman, a second and a third from Edmonton, second and a third from Nashville, second and a third from Tampa. All right. Um, Tampa would make the most sense because we'd be sending him out east. So Hunter really wanted to keep you, buddy, but it's just not going to work out anymore. It is a sign and trade with Tampa. There's going to be some uh, upset players morale-wise, but that is okay. As far as the forwards are concerned, some other players do have to get moved out. Um, we do have a bit of a tough decision on the right wing side. Coronado or Sharon Govich have to go. Um, if not both, there is an argument for both. It's going to kind of depend on what the returns are for these guys. I don't necessarily want to get rid of that Sharon Govich contract immediately, but again, it's a no trade, not a no movement. So how loyal do I need to stay to the deal? Uh, I think that's Rasmus Rene in a third. Rosovic a third and Bear. Chikrin in a fifth or Matt Roy Matois. Uh, Detroit would be nice because we'd be sending Sharon Govich out east. Rene is a 77 overall 20-year-old forward, medium top six playmaker. <laughs> uh, that works. Yegor Sharangovich has Yegor Sharangovich. 
we're working on it. All right. We're still workshopping some stuff here. Cut me some slack. Um, and again, that still won't be the last trade that we end up doing. I do need to see what's going on with Matt Coronado. Again, if he would be willing to turn into a two way, he'd have a spot on this team for a long time. Uh, but he still thinks he can be a sniper. His current morale is only neutral, so he's not very happy with me in the first place. Um, if we can move on from him, we should. There isn't a very good return for him right now. Not that we couldn't find a manual return, but uh, I think that means he'll get one last chance. One last chance for Coronado. Um, but no guarantees he stays here long term. Left wing side, similar player. Real life, I think Calgary's got a gem on their hands, but Connor Zary has to go. Um, in this timeline, again, he wouldn't switch to a two-way. Because he wants to be a playmaker, he is directly competing with Cullen Potter, who is a significantly better playmaker than Connor Zary is. So Connor's got to go. There's also not a very good return for him either. Hmm. Maybe we try to find some manual trades here. We'll we'll come back, actually, to Connor's area then. And then we have a couple of centers that have to go. Uh, the first one's a little bit scary because he's really good. But Adam Banach, uh, really, really good playmaker. But it basically comes down to him or Hanzik, and I'm going to stay with Hanzik, who is an actual Flames prospect. Uh, Banach, second and a third from Edmonton, second and a third from Nashville. From Vancouver. No matter what, it's an Eastern Conference team. We'll try to find a trade on our own. And then good old Jakob Eiswozniak. Uh Power forward. He's competing directly with Hanzik. And Hanzik is uh, is better. We tried to get Wozniak to switch to a two-way. He wouldn't do it. Uh, and as a result, that means he is going to go as well. Uh, Carolina's offering us an absolutely garbage trade. So, yeah, we have some manual trades that we need to find here. Let's see what we can do. Years have passed, and pick hoarding is still in our veins. It'll never go away. It'll never go away. Um, so who is interesting? Have you had any success with position and player style stuff? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're just going to be... Uh, Either a little bit lucky, make sure adaptability is high up there for certain players. There's a couple different things to keep an eye out on to be successful with it. Um, 21 year old medium. I mean, this defenseman. Alphonse Fry. Fry. Eins. Fry. I don't remember. Uh, offensive defenseman. No, he does have a cannon of a shot. Um,. He'd be a better two-way, though. Makes me kind of nervous to go after him. Uh, Bruins aren't willing to trade a second, though. How many prospects did you have to sign and trade in Season 1? Over a dozen, I'd say. All right. Uh, Buffalo. Do you have anybody that would work out for us here? You're not willing to trade your first. Of course not. Yeah, no top-notch prospects. I am looking to find Eastern Conference teams that are interested in these players that have interesting players they're giving up. Uh, because if I'm going to trade these guys, I do not want to trade them to a Western Conference team and have them knock me out in the playoffs. Uh, the Red Wings looking to give up Prab Bahal, a big old power forward who would be a great replacement for Wozniak especially. Um, also looking to move on from Romain L'Italien as a young playmaker. And then a medium four defensive prospect. That kind of sucks. I mean, these two players right here from Detroit would be nice. Um, Cap-wise, it might not work out with Coronado being the piece going back, but let's see. Uh, who is our most valuable asset that we're looking to give away? It's Benak. Detroit would still have too many skaters. Ah, yes, because they uh, must have Bethal. Actually, they might have both in uh, junior. Uh, so we got John Merrill and Alec Martinez that we can take on. So Banak and Coronado, Bethal, the Italian. How close are we? Not close enough yet. 
Who else can we add in? Do we have anybody in junior? Just boy Chuck. Uh, draft pick would make sense here. What about our own third? Or not a Banach and a third for Bethal, L'Italien, and company. Third's not enough. Willing to give up a second here. How do we feel now, Detroit? Still not enough, huh? Second and a fourth from Vancouver? Still not enough. What about our second and a third? I mean, they're sitting there saying, like, oh, they're similar players. They're not. They're different player types in different positions. Our shared rosters finally cross platform. They are not. They are not, unfortunately. So, yeah, you would have to find a PS5 equivalent. Happy hunting. I haven't been able to look myself yet. All right. Coronado, Zeri, and Banak. I'd have to add one other dude. They have Anderson. Uh, let's add Johansson. And yeah, now they'd be. Uh, wait a minute, they'd be under the league minimum sell. No, they. Oh, I would be. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, let me retain fifty percent on Connor's area then. Coronado, Banak, and Zeri for Bathal Le Italian, and a couple of guys to make it work. Will this go through? Wow. Still. That's crazy. What about a third rounder? Still. A second? Holy shit. They definitely made hard trade difficulty more difficult. My goodness. There it is. Okay. So Coronado, Benak, Zeri. A second and a third, and we got two strong prospects and a couple uh, examples of AHL filler. I am good with this. I am good with that. So Coronado's out. Zary, Banak are out. Uh, this means we'd only have to sign one AHL defenseman as well. We had that on our short list of things to do. Decent amount to give up, obviously, but there's a chance that Bethal, um will be better than the other three Anyway, this guy is very promising, whether as a power forward or a two-way in the future. So I am good with that big-time deal. Um, if we look here defensively, oh boy. Let's send down Johansson and Merrill. We got to call up Poirier. Apparently, I'd be under the cap if I did that, so let me go... Kadri, Stromgren. I don't know who we're getting rid of between Stromgren and Pelletier, to be honest. Let me call up those two. We are pushing it cap space wise now, that's for sure. I hate the same player role stuff. So. Uh yeah, it doesn't affect the morale too much though, so it doesn't bother me all that much. And that is what our defense is gonna look like this year, which I do like. Shout out to RPS. Thank you very much for the reset. Welcome back to the two months. How the hell are you? I hope you're good. All right, just making sure we know we can send down Rasmus Rene. Apparently, we'd be under the cap if we did, though. Call up Pelletier. Send down Rene. I don't believe Basha is going to make the team. What else can we call up here? Karen's needs to come up. Oh, yeah. We're going to need a cap oil for sure. Karen's for Basha. Yeah, I'm going to need to sign a cap whale before I pull off another trade. <laughs> we are right up against it now at this point in terms of the cap floor. Uh, so, again, I needed one more uh, veteran defenseman, so that can be the cap whale. We have $22 million in space. Uh, and we will go for Zach Bogosian. Actually, you know what? Zach Bogosian's made a good amount of money. Let's go for Chad Ruedel. Underrated defenseman. Chad Ruedel. Solid career. Steady. Reliable. Let's give him a nice little uh, windfall of retirement money. Thank you very much, Chad. Welcome in. 
I do like the immediate acceptance offers, except for the start of free agency. Um, that kind of sucks at that point because you can just pretty much guarantee yourself all the top prospects. He played for the Sabres. He deserves it. I mean, Zach Bogosian played for the Sabres too, though. Lest we forget. Okay. So, Eyes Wozniak is going. And then it is either Pelletier or Stromgren. With the value that Stromgren has, it's tough to say he should be the one to go. When Pelletier has played for us, he's been really good. He's very solid. He is like the perfect third line winger in terms of being defensively responsible. Stromgren, he's a, he's a medium nine, so I'm worried his trade value will never be as high as it is now. Uh, he is pure grinder. I mean, you can see the body checking there. Like this dude just runs around and hits people, but he can score goals as well. So that's the question. Do we go with the guy who will probably never have this trade value again? Or do we go with uh, Pelletier? I think it's going to come down to whatever Eastern Conference team has prospects that we might want to acquire. And uh, if we can make that deal work. Right? Like Toronto had, um, you know, nobody there, but you had the other team being willing to give up a medium elite with Detroit. So. Your trading was, he's directly competing with Hanzik. And I'm choosing Hanzik over him. Just because he was uh, an original on this team. So. I'd love to keep him, but too many players for too few spots. Happens all the time. Gotta make some tough choices. Let's see. Guys, oh, I am not finding another example of a top-notch prospect on an Eastern Conference team. He's a 50. He's a 50. There is Geet and Ekberg, but damn. Old Matthew, only a 50. That is harsh. Montreal with Granlin, that's not going to work. Panther hey, shot to Link, 25 months on the... Hello, on the primer Link, how the hell are you? Uh, who is this, Landon Ruck? Liam Ruck. Uh, another playmaker. <laughs> Can't have enough of them. Link, how are you tonight, man? Uh, we might have to come back to Florida. Yeah, it, it's going to be Florida. Or it was, I think, Boston. Like Charlie E looks not bad. But for Eastern Conference teams and prospects, it was Florida or Boston. Boston had that defenseman that I wasn't too sold on. So we're going to go say hi uh, to the Florida Panthers. We're looking at Ruck. We're looking at Linus Erickson. And uh, that's about it. I mean, Nelson, maybe. Francis Nelson. Could bring him in, too. Uh, so it comes down to our final decision here. Stromgren or Pelletier? I don't know who to choose, but we have to choose. Stromgren consistently scoring goals in a fourth line role. Doesn't take too many pims for how physical he is. Doesn't block too many shots. The giveaway takeaway ratio isn't Great, but it's not abysmal either. Or Pelletier, who will have a smaller sample size because he's been a depth forward for us. But eight points in 14 games. Like, he's constantly putting up points when he plays, wherever he plays. <sighs> ah, giveaway, takeaway ratios. Fucking elite. Like, he does his job as a two-way forward. He hits, he blocks. It's Pelletier. I hate to do it. I hate to do it, but tough choices have to be made. And that is the tough choice to be made, but Pelletier looks stellar. Um, we will see if we can even this up with draft picks. This might be too much in my favor, but Eyes Wozniak and Stromgren, 
Ruck, Erickson, Nelson a second and a fourth? What about just a second? The second will work. Done deal. Done deal. Pelletier makes the team. Now we do have a couple of holes in the roster that we need to fill that some of the players that we had on the team uh, are not capable of playing in terms of style or role. Uh, we can leave Erickson there for the moment. I need a third line, either two-way or grinder. And I need, ideally, a young fourth line sniper. Um, or a second line sniper. It kind of depends on who's out there. Troy Terry, you are not a sniper, are you? No, you are a two-way. <sighs> if he was a third liner, he'd be perfect. And he's willing to be traded here, too, but it doesn't work. 84 overall still for Cam Atkinson, huh? Interesting. Depth forward at an 84. And then, you know, that's not the worst in Anaheim. That's not the worst with Atkinson and Pugliarvi. That could that could be worse in terms of what we're looking to target. Uh, Boston, of course, trading prospects. Sabres are trading prospects. Carolina, not going to work for us. Chicago with Bjorkstrand, who would be a decent little sniper. I mean, you could argue, though, it's like we might as well have just kept Coronado or somebody like that for the value. I'd give up five first for Pugliarvi. I mean, have you seen how he's played in the preseason? Hopefully that continues throughout the regular season. We'll see. Uh, Dallas, nobody there. Detroit, nobody there. Huge and Zach Hyman just don't quite fit what we're looking for. Uh, Matthew Joseph? Matthew Joseph would be perfect for the third line. Hartman would also fit the third line. Athanasiu as a fourth line sniper could work. Could work. I don't know if I trust it necessarily. But, uh... That's that's an option. Montreal, Grandland not going to work for us. Nashville's trading prospects. New Jersey, not going to work. The New York Islander, also not going to work out for us. Rangers, no. Sens, not going to work. Not going to work. Not going to work. Logan Couture, not going to work. Can O'Connor. Connor is a third line two way. McCann just doesn't play the right side. If only, if only. Ooh, Tampa. Sorelli is going to be a two way. That'd be great. Hagel, though, is a playmaker rather than a sniper. So close. So close. Imagine Toronto trading a W. Clark. How dare you? How dare you? Uh, Utah, Jason Dickinson, not bad, but nobody to pair him with. Vegas, not going to work. Rosovic, not going to work. Okay, we have two options. It is Cam Atkinson and Jesse Pugliarvi, or the Minnesota options of Joseph Hartman and Athens CU. Right. How's Andreas done recently? Six goals in 65 games last year. Jesus. He was atrocious. <laughs> How's Cam Atkinson been doing? 11 goals in 82 games. The duck one seems better. Steven, are you sure you're just not a big fan of Yessi Pugliarvi? Are you sure that's not what's going on? Not bad. Atkinson and Pugliarvi can play the roles that we need them to play. I mean, a little bit of both. At least you're honest about it. At least you're honest. Uh, what can we give up here to get this deal done for cheap? Yeah, to add, like, the fall into the mix. Boy, Chuck. We still have some damn good prospects. <sighs> Karen's. 
Herons is going to be playing fourth line center. For that value, it might be worth cashing out. It would mean that I need a fourth line center that can play playmaker. I think that's Hoskins, right? Yeah. Trevor Hoskins was MVP of the Calder Cup winning team last year. Now might be a good time to cash out on Karen's. He's never going to have that good of value again. Now could be the time. So what if we go Hoskin? Okay. This, this could work. Karen's usually has a horrible plus minus. Yeah, when he's played, he hasn't uh he hasn't done particularly well for us. Not particularly well. We use Karen's to get this deal done. We want the German Sedines. They're close. They're not there yet. I think they're one season away. Atkinson pull your in the third for Rory Karen's. A, instead of a third, what about a fourth next year? Okay, instead of that, what about a sixth this year? A seventh? <laughs> Please? Straight up. Okay, this is what it is. All right. So some uh, big-time moves having to move on from some big-time players, but we're making those decisions early on about who we like and trying to give them the opportunities to succeed. And that will include sending down Linus Erickson to call up Mr. Hoskin. Again, the Grievas are very, very close. Very, very close to being ready. Uh, we do need a forward to be a healthy scratch. I have one roster spot. And, uh, again, we need them to take up more cap. Jesse Pugliarvi in Calgary, baby. Where he belongs. We'll treat him with proper respect. Uh, yeah, Tyler Johnson's not bad. He can play the role. Boston, near Boston Bruins legend, Tyler Johnson. <laughs> uh, we'll give him about four and a half. Yeah, there we go. All right, TJ, welcome in. Welcome in, and let's see what this finalized team is going to look like. Just need to make sure that everyone is good to go. All right. So, again, a lot of talent out the door, but you'll be able to see who we have kind of put our support behind. We do have Hubert O'Hagans and Marner. The second line is going to be Potter as the second line playmaker to build around, as we talked about, 90 passing, 93 awareness. Uh, Sam Honzik, we got to give a chance to. Got to give a chance to. There is an opportunity for him to develop either into the elite power forward he wants to be, or maybe an elite two-way. And then we are going to give a very early opportunity to Logan Stewart, who was the 17th overall pick last year. We are trying to train this guy up as an elite level sniper. Uh, I think he's got the potential to do it. We're trying to kind of brute force him into that role. Uh, we do need to take Tyler Johnson out for Appleby. Third line, we're looking for defensive responsibility. Pelletier, Kadri, Pugliarvi. And a fourth line of Appleby as a power forward, Hoskin as a playmaker, and a veteran sniper in Cam Atkinson next to them. Um, so again, it's... It's more about the fact that we elected to stay loyal to Potter and Hanzik. And uh, we needed some defensive responsibility for that third line. Other than the bugs, thoughts on franchise, much better. Much, much better. Still got a ways to go. Don't get me wrong, but it is improved. And uh, for the most part, I'm enjoying it. And of course, that top line, like Jonathan Huberto has decided, hey, I'm going to be good again. We'll see how long that lasts. Defensively, Uyghur and Anderson. Kessler and Parekh. And then Jeremy Poirier is going to sit out for Henry Muse, who is going to play with Yoni Yermo. So I do like that top four 
a lot. A lot, a lot. And then, of course, the goaltending is still Dustin Wolf and Spencer Knight. This is the year for Dustin Wolf. Um, this is the year for Dustin Wolf to earn a contract. Give me a second here. Oh, goodness. My dog is apparently barking at deer outside. Mm, I'm just trying to, to walk wife. through this fucking Shout out to Goku <laughs> fan. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, <in>. welcome. <laughs> um, last thing to note here, the AHL, right? Because we talked about the NHL and what we're looking to do there with the Lions. And it's like, yeah, you know, we got rid of um, quite a few <laughs> good players, right? Like, it's tough to get rid of Wozniak and Banak and... Trethway and Brustowitz and Zary, Coronado. Um, but not only, of course, do we have the replacements here, but the AHL as well is now just chock full of players with good potential. It's awesome. Especially in goal. Meg, I didn't because, again, I have no idea how to help. Um, defensively, we do need to make sure... Let's hope that Henry Brustowitz is uh, less of a dick than his older brother. <laughs> uh, honestly, yeah, the AHL is kind of kind of hurting a little bit. Just a lot of veteran defensemen who are playing, and that's just kind of that. So we definitely need to focus on some defensive prospects coming up. Uh, and then forward prospect wise, it's it's hilarious. It's an embarrassment of riches, especially with uh, the Grivas, who hopefully will continue to develop. And we do still have quite a few forwards. Like, dude, Nolan Fitzhenry didn't even make it into the lineup this year. Um, we could actually afford to maybe even make one more trade. Maybe, maybe. Do we have any forwards here that just don't have that good of a potential? Medium nine for Kolzig. We drafted him as a, another German to try to work with the Grievas. Low six Bataglia, Suni Evan Bell. Ah, we'll deal with it. There's some guys I don't necessarily want to move on from yet. So I don't know if we'll necessarily make the playoffs, but I do like the looks of this team. Uh, and this way, too, we're not trying to balance like, oh, this guy's a second liner, but he's on the third line. So give him the power play. Time. Like, nah, screw that. Like, we can just put players in their best roles. Steven, you read my mind about that defender from Boston, but I'm going to. Uh... Oh, man, I don't know. Maybe we should start to be a little bit more harsh with some of these players. But then again, they could get better and we might be able to get players even better than that guy in Boston. Power play one this year. Hagens, Marner, Huberto. Instead of Parekh and Anderson, let's get uh, Mackenzie Weger. We don't need him doubled up. Does chemistry still work the same this year? Yes. We want Anderson and Weger. Of course, both right-handed shots. Because every freaking defender on this team is a right-handed mm -hmm. shot. To walk Shout breath. out. Easy for me to say to Zach. Oh, Zach, welcome in. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I do hate that my top line are all playmakers, but there's just not much I can do about it. Marner doesn't want to leave. Huberto, I haven't checked, but let's be honest, Huberto's not going to want to leave either. And then Hagens is just kind of here. Um, but we know that Marner and Huberto can score goals. So that's the one line where I'm willing to be like, all right, let's not have the proper, proper setup because at least they have the abilities to offset the fact that they're all the same player type. Um... It does raise the question of who the hell gets the puck. Um, I think Mackenzie Weger. Let's get Mackenzie Weger the puck. Why not? Why not? What's the worst that could happen? And then that second power play unit. Some of the younger guys. Potter, Hanzik, Stewart is there. Uh, so we need hmm. we need Perek. Honestly, Muse could be given an opportunity as an OFD. You give Muse an opportunity. Did I put Muse in there the first time? I did. 
So I get for looking at chat while I'm setting things up. Uh, Saprak, we want Hanzik as the big man. Stewart is a right-handed shot. All right. Uh, finisher, we want it to be Stewart. Again, we are going to try to try to brute force this guy into development this season. That is the game plan. And let's get Hanzik on the draws. And that is that. So let's see. Let's see. It might be a year off for development, but then again, we have made the first round of the playoffs two years in a row and have gone one and eight in that time. So uh, why not take a year off for the sake of player development? Uh, Nazem Kadri was apparently named captain of the team, which I am okay with. Uh, we'll have Anderson be the defensive captain just due to his tenure. And the other letter... Go to Pelletier, man. He's he's been he's been persistent. He's been very persistent in making this team. You deserve it, buddy. You deserve it. Meg, I'll look again later, but I, I don't know. I don't know how many times I can say I don't know. <laughs> I am not the all knowing oracle. I'm the mostly knowing oracle. Alright, let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. The early portion of the season are some of these moves not going to pay off. Got to be honest, though, like any of the moves. Hello, Travis Dermott. I do need another defenseman. Is he on a two-way deal? He is not, so we'd have to pay him. I'll say no to that then. Who have we traded away? So again, it was as Rasmus Anderson gets hurt very early on. Uh, we got rid of Charlie Trethaway, Honor Burstowitz, Yegor Sharangovich, Matt Coronado, Connor Zary, Adam Banak, Jakob Ishwashniak, and uh, Stronggren. We got rid of a lot of people. A lot, a lot of people, but it had to be done. Too many players for too few spots. Uh, let's get Tyler Johnson out of there. There we go. Zane Parekh, by the way, already up to an 88 since the season started. He is going to be a top two defenseman very, very soon, um, which is going to create its own issues in terms of uh, trying to balance this and in terms of trying to keep players happy. So. Uh, Griva, we'll just go. I don't want to go full best lines for them right now. Come on, chair. What are you doing to me? Uh, Aaron Kessler has been injured with injured foot, so we are still kind of struggling to keep our defenders healthy. A few of them that there are. Seven four and one cashing out on Uyghur eventually to the age. Yeah, I mean he's probably the one to go, which is a bit of a shame. But uh I don't know if that's NHL Calgary or AHL Calgary. That's my uh one dislike of using the flames. And it looks like it was NHL Calgary. Because Kessler can come back in. We'll leave Anderson out until he's hundred percent. We should get another alert. Turns out he was going to be fine before that start of the game anyway. Let's see. So, old Jeremy Poirier, yikes. Not great, buddy. Not a great debut as our seventh defenseman. Not ideal. We are going to need better than that as the season goes on. Much, much better. Jonathan Huberto, strained hamstring, will be out for a little bit. Going to be a good year for rookies. We will see if that's the case. Huberto's back. We started off strong. We're a little bit more inconsistent now. Maybe Dermot was the guy. Maybe. Of course, Tyler Johnson's been playing a little bit due to injury. We might again have to ask Marner and Huberto to waive their uh, their clauses. If we could get rid of one of them, that would be pretty nice. How's Stewart doing? Yeah, 11 points in 18 games. Logan has a chance at the Calder this year. He does. Uh, it's still early, right? It's only November. 
So, yeah, we're losing games hand over fist now, unfortunately. Uh, 11, 7, and 4. Not the best, not the worst. 25th and goals, 4, 5th and goals again. So our defense has been stellar. It is our offense that's struggling, and I imagine it's because of the chemistry of that top line and all of them being playmakers. Huberto, point per game. Jonathan Huberto. Hagens, one point over a point per game. Marner, just under a point per game. Eight goals in 22. Uh, Colin Potter's actually been scoring more than I need him to. Um, and, of course, he's dropped down to third line scoring forward. Actually, he might have been there to begin with. Uh, Hansik, not amazing so far. Stewart, still the 11 points. Pelletier, ugh. Kadri. That third line is not contributing like I was hoping they'd be able to. Appleby's got three points. The bottom six in general has not been contributing like I was hoping they'd be able to. Uh, defensively, Uyghur, 11 points and a minus three. Eight points plus three for Anderson. Same for Rack, not bad. Endo, hello, by the way. Got to Kessler, plus six, even though he can't skate. Uh, the Yermo and oof, Henry Muse pairing. Not amazing so far. Dustin Wolf on a 908. Spencer Knight on a 944. As things stand, this is going to be Dustin Wolf's last season here. That is not great. That is not great. Um, let's go have a conversation with two individuals. The first being Jonathan Huberto. Are you willing to waive your no movement clause? No, he is not. Mitch Marner, are you willing to waive your no movement clause? No, you are not. So that top line, at least for now, is going to have to stay the same as uh, less than ideal as it is. Hoping for that dag offer on Wolf. Uh, it's the last year of Wolf as an RFA. That's definitely what I'm hoping for. Uh, raging, I, I've, I've heard actually from tactics. <laughs> um, height can often end up being incorrect in the game. Um, that's been a problem for a while, especially for players that are uh, not in the NHL. So, Vaklov Nostrosl. We tried to get you to become a grinder. You weren't willing to do it. That's a shame. <sighs> That's unfortunate. We're going to have a couple others here, including Andrew Basha. There he is now. Sniper? Yes, Andrew. Yes. All right. That is tremendous for the sake of your future. Andrew Basha willing to become a sniper. Let's go. That's big. Definitely going to be a better sniper than a playmaker. Three hearts, Griva. Come on, German Sedins. Yes. All right. We have the sniper of the bunch. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome to get a win like that. Um, very happy. Very, very happy. We have the Daniel. We have the Daniel, which means Gustafs will need to become the Henrik. Is it easier to get AHLers to change? Um, a lot of times, yes, because it mentions if someone's a lower overall, they might be more willing to be moldable. Uh, but again, there's a lot of different factors that goes into it in terms of like when a player is willing to uh, to listen. So there's a lot to it. 14, 8, and 5. We said it might be a down year. Well, Jonathan Huberto just broke his goddamn leg. That has opened up a spot in the top six for a sniper. We do have somebody who was just willing to switch to being a sniper. 
not the Griva, though. Uh, we are talking about Andrew Basha. This is a hell of an opportunity for you, Andrew. Hell of an opportunity. Because you are going to get that chance to replace Jonathan Huberto. Good luck, sir. Basha, Hagens, Marner, Potter, Hanzik, and Stewart. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. So a tremendous opportunity for one Andrew Basha. He's going to be on that top unit now. And to be honest, we are going to feed him the puck. Get the puck to Andrew Basha. See if he can prove himself. It's worth a shot. It is worth a shot. Let's see, Rasmus Rene gets hurt down in the AHL. We've had a lot more injuries this year than some of the other years that we've simmed through. Thankfully, a good amount of them are short, except for the Huberto injury. Can't wait for the investigation when Huberto refuses to wave and his leg like, mysteriously gets broken. Oh, I got attacked in the parking lot. It was really weird. Yeah, it wasn't that? Uh, that was really, really weird, wasn't it? 18, 12, and 5 as of January 1st, 2028. Welcome to the future. Uh, let's take a look at not only how our team is doing, but how things are going around the league. We are 19th in goals for, 5th in goals against, top 10 for both power play and penalty kills. So, not bad. As we talked about, currently 3rd in our division behind Vancouver and Vegas. Which is not too Bad. Where's Jeff Galuli? What a reference. Got Clem dropping the Jeff Galuli name. The fucking Jeff Galuli name drop. I've been a streamer for a long time. I'm pretty sure that name has never been typed in this chat. So bravo. Jesus Christ. All right. God damn. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Oh, God damn it. A uh, historically fun name to say, of course. As we look at our forwards, James Hagen's point per game. He's doing well. Mitch Marner, just under a point per game, has 12 goals. Huberto was over a point per game when he got hurt. Stewart, 20 points in 35 games. We're going to see how he's doing in the Calder run. Potter doing pretty well. Kadri, all right on the third line. Hanzik. Uh, mate. Oh, he has dropped to a third line scoring forward. Maybe. Maybe we made the wrong choice. That's tough to say, though. It would have been Wozniak. If we didn't keep Hanzik. Because we wouldn't have kept Banak because we would have had too many playmakers. So. Pelletier has been all right. He's been all right. Atkinson. Yeah. Pugliarvi, eh. Whoo! Oh, six points in seven games since replacing Jonathan Huberto. Andrew Basha, let's go. Let's go. Uh, Hoskin as the fourth line center has been atrocious. Uh, Appleby on the fourth line has not been great either. So that fourth line's been shit. It's normally been a staple of our team for the past couple seasons. They have been awful. Absolutely awful. Defensively, Zane Parekh, 20 points. Still a top four defenseman for now. 20 points for Rasmus Anderson in 12 less games. Uyghur, 18 and 35 is okay. Muse, okay. Yermo, okay. Kessler's been pretty good. And Emporier as our seventh B, pretty mid. In goal. Dude, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine we're keeping Dustin Wolf long term. Again, his deal is up at the end of the year. He will be an RFA, I'm pretty sure. Or last year was his last year as an RFA. I'm not sure. I think last year was his final year. Um, There's a chance he's walking in free agency, man. He's not getting it done. Does Bouncer also work for offensive zone battles around the net? Yes. Yes, it does. See, I feel like using a grinder in Eshul or if you can uh, develop a grinder in this game with Bouncer or something beautiful it's beautiful around the league just before the midway point of the year William Nylander and Austin Matthews succeeding quite well without one Mitch Marner 
Got Eichel up there, Pasternak. Kempe stayed in Vegas. Five years, 7.9 million with a full no trade clause over the five years. McDavid's up there, Tara Vinen. Top goal scorer right now is Pasternak. Uh, Roman Kansarov is up there for Chicago. Bo Horvat. Old Bowie. 21 goals in 36 games for the Islanders. A bit of a renaissance. Defensively, Adam Fox, Quinn Hughes, certainly in the running for the Norris. Morrissey and Riley are kind of in the conversation. Goalie is the winningest Joseph Wall, who won the Vesna last year for the Leafs. The shutout leader with four, Ilya Sorokin and Sam Montembeau, now in New Jersey, which is not too bad. And oh, we should have signed Flurry, man. We should have signed Flurry. God damn. Fucking Lavis coming in with the goddamn football questions out of nowhere. <laughs> Bucky Irving or Josh Downs? That is a great question. And the thing is, I don't give a damn about fantasy football, so I can only go off of vibes. And you can't go wrong with a dude named Bucky. <laughs> Got the Jacob Fowler up there for Montreal as well. You guys would have seen the names that are up there. The rookie race. Ooh. Remember when we could have traded up for Mikey Bearchild? I prefer to call him Bearchild as opposed to Burchild or Burchild. Uh, Porter Martone's also up there. Rough crowd for Stewart, but he is only six points back for the lead. He is in the mix. He is absolutely in the mix for this award. Potter's up there, too, in fairness. <sighs> mm. We might have some things to change, but so far, honestly, the season's gone pretty well. 